video today I'm bringing you a tutorial featuring the Urban Decay Game of Thrones makeup collection prior to the release of the last ever episode. The collection is absolutely magnificent, even if you aren't a Game of Thrones fan you can appreciate the thought and detail that went into every aspect of the collection from the exterior packaging and the range of shades, the shade names and everything in between. Very bulky and cool, very old school Urban Decay. The palette itself opens like a book to reveal a mirror and a cardboard pop up of the Iron Throne and the shades themselves pull out from the sleeve. So you've got 20 eyeshadows in total I was in this palette and they're limited edition shades to my knowledge. I like how it's broken down into four sections. I find in this way, even if you're a beginner, you're not overwhelmed with the shades. The shades that go well together are grouped together and then of course you can mix and match. I was really lucky to be sent out this collection and the next item in the lineup is the Mother of Dragons palette. Again, as you can see, the packaging is simply stunning. Inside then we have a trio of highlighters, so a cool toned pink, um, a warm kind of peach shade and then a bronze shade. A dragon egg is embossed within each highlighter shade and then they're named after the three dragons of course. I'm not using this palette today because I'm going for a very cool look and I wanted something a little more subtle on the cheeks than the pink. I'm going in then with the shade Hard Home from the top section of the eyeshadow palette. Each of the larger shades on the edge are more so thick than the rest of the eyeshadows. They're thicker and have kind of more chunky metallic particles in them. They'd actually be nice layered over eyeshadows too, but today I'm using this one to highlight the face and I actually really like the result. Lipstick wise then we have four shades in the range. Today I'm going for the White Walker lipstick which is a deep burgundy and it's one of their comfort matte lipsticks. Now if you're looking for a matte finish you're not really going to get it from this lipstick and it's not the most opaque formula I find. Um, it's kind of glossy and glides across the lips with ease, there's no dragging. Um, if you don't blot the lips I find it's kind of very glossy and transfers easily but if you do it's grand and comfortable to wear. Wear time wise it's actually very decent uh, after eating and drinking I still had a berry stain left to the lips and I didn't use a liner or anything so I'm actually a fan of this. Onto the eyes now I'm using my Urban Decay uh, eyeshadow primer potion, my trusty primer. I'm swiping this across the lid area and then I'm using a brush just to blend the product into the skin. So I'll be using all shimmery shades and I wanted a matte in the mix to help things blend that bit easier. So I'm taking Nymeria which is a warm matte brown eyeshadow. Like I said I'm keeping things cool today and this eyeshadow won't be seen in the finished look but it just helps me with blending later on. So I've pat this shadow down on the outer third of the eye and then I'm sweeping the colour into the crease, rocking the shadow back and forth until I get a blend that I'm happy with. And I'm also flicking my brush upwards on the outer corner to lift the eyes and help elongate them. I'm going for a winged out look with my shadows today. Next then I'm taking the eyeshadow uh, Free Folk which is a cool toned sparkly silver eyeshadow. With all of the shadows that have a shimmer in them I spritzed my brush with the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray and then got to work. So this shadow is really easy to apply, not powdery or anything, and is nice and opaque as you can see, and I apply this around halfway across the eyelid. Now I'm picking up some of the shade Frozen North, which is a deep teal blue shade that has a metallic finish. The texture of this was a little chunkier than the previous eyeshadow and didn't adhere to the skin as easily. I had to carefully pat this down because there just would have been fallout everywhere otherwise. I added a couple of sprays of the setting spray so then the shadow was a little less opaque than I wanted but it just meant that it applied a bit better to the eye area so in that instance what I do then is I go back in with the eyeshadow dry. I get the full intensity of the shadow but I have that tacky base layer for it to stick to so it just works out better. So now I'm taking a pencil brush with no eyeshadow on it and I'm flicking up on the edge of the teal shade up towards the crease to fade it into that area. Next then I'm taking some of the eyeshadow Take the Black which is a shimmery black shadow. It's black but it has flecks of silver running throughout the shade and I'm working this onto the outer corner of the eye and it doesn't really show up well over the blue. It just kind of doesn't really layer well but crisis averted um, it applies grand on its own which is the main thing for me for this look anyway. So I picked up some on a tapered blending brush and I just started applying this into the crease. And for a black it was actually surprisingly easy to blend. I was expecting to have a lot of hassle with this shade but it was actually a breeze. So I just took my time with the shade as I usually do, added a couple of layers and blended until I was happy with the end result. Then they have a selection of liners, this is Winterfell Snow and I adore the 24-7 glide on eye pencils so I was excited about this. The liner itself is a white with an iridescent blue shift, very cool, and I added this around the tear of the eye, kind of as a base for another shadow, but it was really beautiful on its own. The pencil was really creamy and I had no trouble applying that. 
Then I'm taking White Walker, which is a frosty kind of pale purpley blue. Um, I'm layering this over the pencil to pick up that shift and they both complement each other really well and add a nice pop to the inner corner. So for the lower lash line then I'm repeating the process of above. Um, I'm starting with Nymeria and smoking that along the lower lash line. Moving on to that teal shade then and I'm using an angled brush and patting this under the eye. I'm using this type of brush because it's dense and I can pack on the shadow without worrying about fallout going everywhere. Um, once I have the shadow firmly in place then I'm taking the pencil brush and I'm just sweeping along that edge to blend it out. Going back to my angled brush once more and picking up some of that black and patting it along the lash line on the upper outer third of the eye and then moving down to the lower lash line. Once again when I've packed the colour on with my dense brush I'm taking a fluffier brush and blending out the edges. To line the waterline then I'm using the Winterfell Snow Liner again and this doesn't really do itself justice on the waterline, it performs much better on the skin on its own or as a base for another shadow. For lashes I didn't want to go on anything too dramatic because I wanted you to be able to see the shadows in all their glory. These are just the kissed lashes and once I've firmly glued them in place I'm moving on to mascara and I'm using the Troublemaker mascara to blend my own lashes in with the false ones and then that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the look and I hope you enjoyed the very last episode of Game of Thrones and I'll catch you all soon.